Murphy's Law and Whitetails, your guide to North America's number one big game animal. Today's topic is hemorrhagic disease, which is one of the largest sources of mortality for whitetail deer. Hemorrhagic disease is a viral disease of deer caused by one of two closely related viral families, EHD virus or epizootic hemorrhagic disease virus and also blue tongue virus. That's why these terms are often used to describe hemorrhagic disease, which is just a collective term for either EHD or blue tongue virus. Hemorrhagic disease is a vector-borne disease, meaning simply that it's transmitted from one animal to another by a third party. In this case, the third party is a biting midge. Here in the South, we call these midges noceums because they bite you and they're hard to see. And they simply take the disease from a diseased animal, bite that animal, fly over to an uninfected animal, and transmit the disease accordingly. Once an animal is infected with hemorrhagic disease, one of three outcomes can occur. One, they can die very rapidly uh, due to rapid internal hemorrhaging, as the name implies, uh, but also due to very high fever. Second possible outcome is that they struggle with the disease, uh, sometimes for weeks, even a couple of months, but yet finally succumb to the disease. The third possibility is that they survive, and some deer do, and those that do have limited antibodies for protection beyond that, but unfortunately at some point are again susceptible to hemorrhagic disease in the future. The disease is fairly predictable seasonally. Uh, the midges and the midge activity typically is, is greatest during the late summer, early fall months. So from July to October, we typically see these outbreaks. Again, often near water sources and often in drought years. So again, somewhat predictable both seasonally and where you'll find these deer on the landscape. It's also fairly predictable to a degree on a cyclical basis. In other words, on, a, you know, on an annual sort of and semi-annual cycle. What we see with hemorrhagic disease is that about every six to eight years, we expect a fairly significant outbreak. Many hunters will remember both 2007 and 2012 as significant outbreak years. In fact, we would have normally considered either one of those years a once in 50 year event, and yet we had two of them in five years. So we lost a lot of deer. And we've had some less significant outbreaks since 2012, but not like those years. So the odds are we're due for a big hammer and probably sooner rather than later. So are all deer equally susceptible? Research says yes. However, hunters often find a dead bachelor group of bucks and it's simply because of their behavior. They're often grouped together in the summer months. They often will come to water together during one of these water holes where these midges are active and bingo. But all deer of, of all sexes and ages are equally susceptible. What can hunters do? Well, frankly, not a lot. Some have attempted to reduce the, the exposure of mud flats near their water sources. Again, that's where the midges breed and, and hang out uh, by creating sharp banks near their ponds and other water sources. Others have tried to spray for the midges. Uh, there's no data to my knowledge on either of those, and my gut is that both of those would be exercises in futility. However, there are some things hunters can do. The first is to try to recognize the disease when it hits and to get a gauge of how severe it is. So if you start finding deer late summer, early fall, again, particularly near water sources, get your other hunters involved, get your neighbors involved, and do a body count, try to figure out how severe the outbreak actually is. Good chance your DNR will be aware of it, so contact them as well. The next thing you can do, once you've got a, a, a gauge of how severe the outbreak is, is to back off your doe harvest, or your deer harvest in, in general, but especially your doe harvest that year. You've got to let that herd recover, particularly if your deer herd is at a suppressed level. Bottom line is, this disease has been around long, longer than we have, and it's gonna be around for many, many years to come. So we gotta to learn to live with it. But you can take some precautionary measures. That's it for this week's episode of Murphy's Law. Hope you learned something. Until next time, be sure to leave your questions and your comments here in the video, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out all the great content at huntstand.com.